This video is going to talk about G00 and G01. These are part of the preparatory codes that tell the computer controlling the CNC machine what to do. Um, we're going to be basing our work today off of this uh, Haas Automation Workbook. Uh, it's a really well done workbook that um, is excellent for beginners to learn how to program G code, be able to look up codes and um, understand a lot about the process. If you look at the table of contents here, there's quite a bit of information before we get to the actual G codes, and that can explain some of the um, significant principles like absolute and incremental positioning, um, even the coordinate system, which by this point, hopefully you have a pretty good grasp of the Cartesian coordinate system and how that works. Um, and we're going to jump to page 13 where it has the list of the, of the often used preparatory G codes. So let's go ahead and scroll down here. Now, when we get to this list here, you're going to notice that this is an abbreviated list. This is not uh, a complete list of all the G codes. That's actually on the next page here. Uh, but one thing I do want to mention is that this is not an exhaustive list. Quite frequently, um, CNC manufacturers will create proprietary codes uh, that you will see in the high 100s and, and 200s when it comes to Gs. So uh, generally, these basic codes will get you started on pretty much any machine that reads G codes. And for some more advanced features, there can be proprietary ones. Now that said, we're going to start with uh, the most basic of the G codes. We're going to start with G00. Now let's talk a little bit about that. So G00, which uh, there's a good description here, is for rapid traverse motion. Now, if you think about what that means, uh, rapid means fast, traverse means moving from one point to another, and motion means something moving, right? So if I kind of think about what G00 means, it is quickly moving from A to B. It's a really good way to think about it. Um, and one thing that I want to point out here, which is absolutely really important as you understand, is this is used for non-cutting moves. We do not cut with G00. It moves from point A to point B quickly, but we do not cut. Let's look at G01 to kind of see the difference, because these are both linear uh, motions these uh, commands are going to move the machine in a line, but it's going to be doing it uh, uh, for different purposes. G01, uh, the way it's described, is a linear interpolation motion. So that begs the question, what is inter interpolation? Well, let's look it up on the good, good old Google web. What is interpolation? Interpolation. It is the insertion of something of a different nature into something else. That itself is pretty vague, but if I think about this uh, in the world of CNC, the insertion of something can be construed as the cutter, and uh, something else can be construed as the material. So if I just think about interpolation as the process of actually cutting, I think this makes a lot more sense. Um, so if I think about this as linear cutting motion, I think that makes a lot of sense. And you can also see that that's the difference between G00 and G01. G00 says it's going to move quickly from A to B. Uh, G01 says it's a linear cutting motion. So if you understand that that word means cutting, we're good to go. Um, if you look at G02 and G03, which we'll go into more depth in a following video, these are circular interpolation options. One is clockwise and one is counterclockwise. But these, um, if we know that interpolation, we're going to say uh, is equal to cutting motion, then we have two circular cutting motions. One is clockwise, one is counterclockwise. Something to keep in mind um, after you kind of get a hang of G01. All right, at this point, I want to go to my NC viewer. Um, I find this is a really easy to access program that um, is really good for building and refining basic programs. I'm going to start a new file and, and let's dive into some 
uh, G00 and G01. Now, I'm not going to use a starting block or anything. I'm just going to jump right into my uh, right into my commands and my coordinates. So, if you by this point you should have already um, kind of mastered or at least got a pretty good grasp of the Cartesian coordinate system and uh, and the ability to um, call out coordinates and to read coordinates. If you can do those two things, um, that makes it a lot easier because all you have to do now is add the commands for motion from um, or within the Cartesian coordinates. It kind of goes together. One is a place. The Cartesian coordinates represent a place you want the machine to go and the G code commands tell it what to do as far as how to get there or what to do once it gets there. So let's take uh, G00 for example. I'm going to go ahead and type that in here in my first line and I'm going to dictate X1, Y1, and Z1. This is, I'm going to treat this as my starting point. So when I hit plot, um, you're not going to see anything there yet, but when I move from that point, then you'll start to see something. From this point, let's say I'm going to move, um, let's say I'm going to actually start cutting at x2, y2, and z.1. We're going to say this is kind of my uh, preparatory point. From here, I'm going to change. Okay, so let's see. So I started at x1, y1, z1, and I moved over and down to x2, y2, z1. Now I could have just as easily made these um, zeros. So it's on my zero axis, and you can see that just changes to the um, axis itself. If I'm looking from above here, the green axis is my y, the red axis is my x, and the blue, which I can only see when I turn, is my z. So this orange line represents this G00 movement. I started at uh, 0 and my move to X2, Y2, Z.1. All right. Now remember, we said G00 is not for cutting. So I'm essentially just putting my cutter in a position, uh, getting ready to cut, essentially. So now let's say I'm ready to cut. I'm going to G01 because I, I know that that's the motion I have to use for linear cutting. And anytime I put a G01, I need a, a feed rate. So let's say my feed rate is 30.0 inches. Uh, you do have to make sure you always put in the decimal uh, because some, com some computers controlling CNC machines, some controllers will freak out if you don't. So make sure you always put a feed rate in anytime you are doing a cutting motion. All right, now let's say I'm just going to cut a very basic square. The first thing I'm going to do is plunge down into the material, let's say by um, 100,000. So my Z is going to be minus 0.1. That's going to take me down into the material. The way we generally treat our machines is that our Z, our Z0 is actually the top of the part. That's pretty much the standard for what we do. So anything Z minus is going to be into the part. Now you can see that from my point where I was, my uh, path to went down, which mirrored this movement. It went essentially 0.9 inches down from Z1, or excuse me, from Z.1 to minus Z.1. So actually, I take that back. I traveled 0.2 inches. All right, let's kind of view from above here, and we're just going to do a very basic square like I talked about. So we're going to, the cutter is going to travel up two inches, over two inches, down two inches, and back to its starting point. So from here we can just say um, uh, Y4, it's going to travel two inches from its current position. Next line would be X4 bring that in the screen and then I'm going to come back down so I'm going to go down to Y2 let's plot that and then come back to X0 oh I went too far I went X0 and actually I wanted X2 
And remember, I am in the G90 or um, absolute positioning. So all these uh, Cartesian coordinates I'm using right now are referencing the zero point. If I would have, um, if I was in G91, I could just tell it from this last point where I want it to move. But the default is G90. So I have to change that to X2 and it'll bring that end point back to my starting point. And now you can see I, I've just created a tool path where I am doing a two inch square, something very, very basic, but hopefully it's getting you understanding of how exactly the um, G codes work to, in conjunction with the coordinates to uh, create a very simple tool path. Now, at this point, you should be able to start creating your own G00 and G01 based uh, programs. The next video we will jump into curves via G02 and G03. But the last thing I want to talk about is modal commands. If you look on my program list here, I started with a G00 uh, and then I started enter entering coordinates, but I did not repeat the G00. This is because um, these movement commands that we're going to be discussing are called modal commands, meaning they stay active until I cancel it or supersede it with something else. So G00 was superseded by G01. And if I wanted to go back to G00, <clears throat> say, and move it back to X0, Y0, I could do it, but I have to tell the computer I'm changing back to G00. So you can see here, just added another G00 line. So once you have the command in place, it stays there until you change it or until you cancel it, which for the purposes of movement, it's generally until you change it to something else. All right, that's it for this video. Watch the next one to talk about G02 and G03 and give you an example of that.